All right, welcome to the first episode of the AR Build Series 3.0. As you can tell, we're gonna be taking a look at the EPC Builder Set. So they release uh, different builder sets every month in different types of finishes. Uh, this one in particular is the Everglade Anodize Finish. So it's a dual color anodize, kind of a camo looking pattern. Um, let's take a look at what's in the box. And here, you're going to get your barrel nut wrench, the Atlas handguard screw and tensioning system, as well as the Torx key needed to tighten that down. And inside of here is your barrel nut. They also include some shims. I typically don't ever need to use these shims, but they also include shims. And then here is your barrel nut. All right, so first we're gonna take a look at the lower receiver. So this is definitely a finish that changes. It's very dependent on the light that is on it. Uh, in direct sunlight, it almost looks like a metallic green. But I thought this was one of the really cool finishes. You typically don't see dual color anodizing. Typically, I'm not really sure how they do this, dual color anodizing. But yeah, typically you either see, uh, you know, your, your tan, solid green, or black. So the EPC lower is constructed of a forged 7075 T6 aluminum. And if I didn't mention it, this is a type three hard coat anodizing. So you get an integrated trigger guard right there and it is sort of skeletonized. You get a very flared magazine well. And then the rear portion here, where your takedown detent and spring go inside of, this is threaded to accept a 440 set screw so that you can, you don't have to fiddle with it when you're putting your buffer end plate and cast nut on. Um, you can just tighten that down and your takedown pin will be captured right there without you having to worry about the spring and detent uh, shooting off like a rocket. So there are a couple of proprietary parts uh, but for the most part, this does accept many of your standard AR lower parts, uh, like your trigger. Um, they do recommend that you use a trigger that's specifically designed to work with PCCs because um, for whatever reason, 9mm in an AR platform and it being blowback, uh, that's just something they recommend. There, it's, a, it's pretty harsh as far as uh, recoil is concerned as compared to 223-556. So just accept your safety selector that you normally have in your lower parts kit, standard grip. So there's a couple parts here that are proprietary and they do include all of them already installed. So you've got your mag release right here. You've got your bolt catch roll pin that is threaded. As you can see there, it does accept just an Allen key. And then you've got your ejector right here, which has a machine slot right there. Overall, very nice build quality. And then they also include right here, a, a screw that mates up to your upper receiver against the, the takedown lug, and that'll just take out any of the slop, if there is any, uh, between the upper and the lower. All right, next up, we're gonna be discussing the upper receiver. So you can see it's got that same type three hard coat anodizing, green and black. This is constructed of 7075 T6 aluminum, and it does start life as a forging. It is not CNC'd from a solid piece of aluminum. 
So it does feature last round bolt hold open in the upper receiver. Sometimes you'll see that in the lower receiver, it just depends on the company manufacturing it. So it does have this pin right here that goes across the lower portion of the upper and it interacts with the follower on the Glock magazine. So that'll allow your last round bolt hold open to function. No forward assist. Typically it's not even something you see on nine mil Blomax systems, especially the bolt carrier group. It doesn't have those notches that you would use a forward assist for. No dust cover, just smooth, slight little bump for your brass deflector. Picatinny spanning across the top. And normally on the solid black versions, uh, and I think on the Cerakoted versions, you would have T markings up top, but none are featured here. It does accept your standard threading for AR barrel nuts. So if you ever wanted to switch out the handguard for anything else, you could just use your standard uh, barrel nut. Next up, we'll discuss the handguard. It comes in the builder set. Again, still featuring that Type 3 anodizing. But as you can see here, this is a little bit brighter as far as the green is concerned. And the reason for that is because of the type of metal that they use here. Um, it is gonna just show a different color uh, when it comes to actual color anodizing, not black or anything like that. But um, yeah, when you do use color anodizing on different materials, you will get definitely different shades. The material here is 6061 T6 aluminum. And you get pig tinny spanning all the way across the top. And then you'll see these different sections here just to cut down on weight. But these are still operational as far as pig tinny sections go. So this does feature Aero Precision's Atlas taper system. So I'll pull that out real quick so I can show you how that works. So the way the handguard attaches to the barrel nut is with this turnbuckle screw and these two taper locks right here. One is reverse threaded and one is normally threaded. And so you've got this turnbuckle right here and that interfaces with a detent. I'm going to try and show that on camera. You see this detent right here on the handguard. And so as you tighten this down on the barrel nut, it's going to click in place. And so the detent's gonna recess inside of those and click in place as you tighten this down right here. So these just screw on to the end of your turnbuckle, like so. And then slide inside of the handguard like that. If you guys have any questions on the builder set from Aero Precision, whether it be the upper, lower handguard or anything like that, just drop a comment down below and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for watching.